All right, here's a little video where I want to show you a trick that most people who use R might not be familiar that R is capable of. Even without downloading any additional packages, you can do everything we're doing here in base R. So I'm in our Studio Cloud here though, and if you want to download this code, you can just click on the link in the video description. So of course R isn't really the best program if you want to do things like calculus. Maple and Mathematica are much better programs for things like that. There's also Maxima, which is open source. But if you want to do some basic calculus work in R, here's just a demonstration. So in order to work with a function in R, instead of defining it as a function, if you want to take a derivative, you need to define it as an expression like this. So let's just save it to a name, expression, and here we have 3x squared plus 10x plus 2. So we're going to have the graph of a parabola here. So let's run this line, control enter, and then if we want to take the derivative, we just use the operator capital D of function f with respect to x in single quotes here. So control enter, and here is our derivative of that function. 3 times 2 times x plus 10, or 6x plus 10, which if you remember anything from calculus, you remember how to take the derivative of a polynomial. So 6x plus 10, that's correct. Now we can take this little result, this derivative, and we can assign it to a function. So I just called it fd for f derivative here. And let's hit control enter there. And, and now we see that little object right here, fd. And in line 10, I'm just making a list of numbers from minus 10 to 10 by 0.1. That way we can graph what the curve and what the derivative look like. So here we're just creating x, and then if we want to plot the function, we're going to put the x points as these x's from minus 10 to 10, and then the y values, it's basically a scatter plot, are going to be evaluating the function f, this expression, at each of those points, each of those values for x. And instead of leaving it looking like points, type equals L says graph it just as a smooth line instead of labeling all these separate points. So control enter, and over here we have our graph of that parabola from minus 10 to positive 10. Now we can also plot the derivative, and what the derivative is going to do is tell us the slope. So this parabola, of course, has a negative slope over here until we get to somewhere around minus one or so, and then the slope will be zero and then turn positive. So let's, again, plot the x values, evaluate the derivative, and put the slope in there at each point in blue. And so we see here, if we go below zero, that the slope is a negative value until we get to, it's kind of hard exactly to see. So that's why here I'm putting in a line, horizontal line, h equals zero. So horizontal line at the level zero. And that way we can clearly see where this slope on the blue line crosses into positive and basically where it is zero. So right here is where the minimum of that parabola is and then the slope goes above the green line, so the slope is going to be positive on this right side. Again, we can visualize that just from looking at the parabola, but I always find it's helpful for understanding derivatives to visualize and really think about the value of that derivative at each point. Now, if we want to do antiderivatives or integrals, integration works a little bit differently. I don't think there's a way in base R to do symbolic integration. That means to take a function and come up with the equation of what the integral would look like, like we did here with the derivative. So we were able to symbolically find out that the derivative of this function was 6x plus 10. There are some other packages you can download that will allow you to do symbolic integration and a little bit better job of symbolic derivatives if you want to Google those. So in order to do an integral, we're going to be able to use an integral to get an estimate of the area under a curve. That's one of the things that integrals are good for. So instead of like up here, we had this defined as an expression in order to do the integrate command, we have to have the same function set up as a function in R. And so if we want to take that function, which I called F1, and we want to integrate it from zero to five, 
What that'll do is find the area under the parabola curve there between 0 and 5. So let's define that function, control enter. Let's do the integral. And it tells us that the integral, the area under that curve between 0 and 5 is 260. And it gives us an estimate of the error to which that was calculated. So the error is going to be less than 3 times 10 to the minus 12. So that's point zero 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 eleven zeros and then 3. So pretty accurate calculation, 260. Now let's visualize what that area looks like without all these other lines there. So that's basically what I'm doing in these parts. I'm creating a new list of x's that are just between 0 and 5, since that's where we're taking that integral. And then let's plot the curve. So this is just zooming into that parabola in the area between x equals 0 and x equals 5. And it looks almost like it's a straight line, but that is definitely a curve. And so let me just draw our bounds. Between 0 and 5 is where we're taking this area. And now I'm filling in a polygon. I'm going to make a red polygon that basically shades in this area that we're calculating here. So here are the values. And now we're plotting this polygon under the curve. So this red thing is the area that the integral is calculating. Now what we could do is we could say, well, I don't want to use calculus. We could approximate this red. It's not a triangle, but we could approximate it with a triangle and just say, okay, well, this is going to be approximately one half times the base, which is five times the height. And the height, if you plug in the value five into our function, three x squared plus 10 x plus two, you get a value of 127. So that's the peak of the triangle over here, which would be the height, 127. And if we calculate the area using a triangular approximation, we get 317.5. That's too large, though. It's a simplistic way to get an approximate answer, but it's a lot larger than the 260 that are calculated for us with this numerical integration. So that's all I have for you in this video. Again, if you want to download this code so you can play around with it, just click on the link in the video description. Otherwise, have a great day, everybody.